every square inch of Utah right now is in drought, and almost 70% is in what the U.S. Drought Monitor calls exceptional drought. That is the worst category. So we're about to talk to a real expert, but before we get to him, let's look at three maps to get ready. First, the snow conditions in Utah. Utah's snow conditions, you see those boxes there? All the red squares on this map show snowpack between 30 and 70% of the median for this time of year. Now consider that, all that red, in relation to this next map. This shows the precipitation for the water year that ended in November. None of that is good. The tiny areas of orange got 70 to 90 percent of average. The bright red got 50 to 70 percent. But most of the state is dark red below half the normal precipitation or pink less than 30 percent of normal for that water year which goes from November through October. Um, that means our soil is dry as a bone. Now take a look at this. This is the soil. So orange, red and pink again and this time it means that rain and snow when it falls all the, the, the first bits of it are going to just soak into that sponge of a ground uh, before it allows any of it to flow into our streams and reservoirs. So let's go to the expert. Mike Seaman is the lead forecaster for the Salt Lake City Office of the National Weather Service. So glad you're with us. And Mike, first, anything um, that I just said stand out to you? Anything that you, you'd like to correct? Did I get anything wrong there? No, first, uh, thanks for having me. Yeah. And um, oh, you pretty much hit it on the head. I think most of us who have been around uh, over the, you know, obviously the past year or so know that it's been exceptionally dry. Um, we started last winter off pretty well, but once we got into about mid to late February, things just shut off. And we have been in persistent drought since then. And to begin this water year, uh, the snowfall year really started out slowly. Um, Fortunately, the last couple of weeks, things have trended a little more active and just every little bit helps and hopefully we can continue that going forward. Yeah, I know we're all just hoping for that. We like it because of the air quality uh, it, it, that, it, uh, that it brings us as well. But I, I wanted to ask about um, how well we understand what this means in terms of, you know, that there are going to be natural fluctu fluctuations. So how well do we understand what of this is natural fluctuation and what of this is really a, a part of climate change and something that we're, we're going to have to address and live with on a longer term basis? Well, certainly a lot of the predictions with climate change suggest that Utah will become more of a, a desert type um, environment. Um, in and of itself, a given year doesn't necessarily por uh, portend to anything. Um, with respect to that, uh, we do go through natural cycles of drought and um, very wet years. Uh, we just happen to be in a very um, dry period now. Going forward, though, certainly um, with the, the climate predictions that we get, uh, this may be more of the norm. And so conserving water is certainly something that we're going to be needing to do more and more. Is there something to the fact that along with, I mean, e even if we get more snow, um, we're, we're also having uh, hotter temperatures. And so that snow will maybe melt sooner, melt quicker, maybe not. Uh, maybe we won't get that late spring runoff uh, as much that helps our reservoirs. There's fairly concern with that. Um, as we try Assuming that uh, climate change uh, continues on as, as many of the models predict, uh, we'll become more of a, a rain-driven climate here, which means a lot of the snowpack will become confined higher and higher in elevation and be a smaller portion of the year, basically the water year. Much of our water would then end up as runoff. The other issue that we're running into is that um, it's kind of a saying the drought begets drought. Um, the drier we are, the drier the soil becomes. Um, some of that water just ends up evaporating back into the atmosphere, we don't actually get it into the soil. And so that soil tends to run hotter, uh, things dry out that way as well. So uh, that's certainly a concern. So as we think about that, I think especially in, in northern Utah, we don't have any big rivers. I mean, it's mostly streams and small rivers that we rely on to fill our reservoirs. And our, our biggest reservoir, you know, it's what uh, the, the, the cliche, I guess, is that really that snowpack has been our reservoir. Um, so if we become more of a rain-driven climate, that really means a difference in how we think about how to use that water if there's less of it. Definitely. Um, I mean, water storage becomes a bigger and bigger issue. Um, typically, um, as we are now, we hold a lot of that water in the form of snow in the mountains through much of the year. Um, if we're seeing a runoff throughout the year, um, say later into the fall and earlier into the spring, we're going to need to be able to not just catch that water, but also um, be smarter about how we use it and basically conserve um, what we do have, because that may be uh, kind of a waning resource. 
Yeah, and and uh, that that is something um, you know U Utah's kind of uh, slow to come to that. Sometimes I know we we use a per capita we use a, a whole lot of water. So so what do you envision? What what, what do we have to do? If you're if you were talking to a community group, well, you are talking to a community group. Uh, what do you tell us? What what do we need to be thinking about and doing? Um, well, a lot of a lot of uh, people have tried more towards a zero scape, uh, mm -hmm. basically more of a desert type uh, layout for their yards. Um, that's certainly an option. Um, you know. Having yards full of flowers and grass is great, but that does take a lot of water. So that's something that we need to be a little bit more careful about. Even simple things at home. I know it's winter, so we're not really thinking about watering lawns, but um, inside the house, things like dripping faucets, um, that can use a lot. I think 14% uh, of water usage I read was just from dripping faucets in terms of, um, let's say, you know, take a shower, cutting one minute off of the shower saves like over a thousand gallons a year of water. Wow. Um, so I know on cold mornings, hot showers sound great, but, you know, just trying to conserve little things like that uh, makes a big difference. And then upgrading appliances. A lot of the newer appliances are much more efficient in terms of water usage. So little things like that can make a big difference. All right. Uh, Mike Seaman, um, a, who is the lead forecaster for the Salt Lake City Office of the National Weather Service. Grateful for your time here today and also just for what you and your fellow scientists there, there do. We all rely on it every single day and we don't get enough of a chance to, to see you and say thanks. So thank you for that. Well, thank you for having us. We mm -hmm. appreciate it.